the bird that built the nest was hatched therein. Hi everybody, Jen Anderson here. I wanted to share with you some thoughts on Christmas and um, I purposefully wanted to post this video after Christmas because I think sometimes we get so busy with the hubbub and the crazy leading up to Christmas that um, as much as we try to focus on Christ, it can kind of get a little bit nuts too. And so I wanted to share this with you because I have actually had this for many years. I've had this for about 20 years. A neighbor of mine, her name is Linda Bergstrom, she gave this to me as a neighbor gift for Christmas years ago. And I love it. And every year at Christmas time, I set it out um, and it, for a couple reasons. Is It's a beautiful picture of the nativity. And if you look at it closely, it's a picture of the wise men and the shepherds who come to see the baby. And um, and anyhow, so I just love that. I think it's really, it's really lovely. But um, I love this idea of the bird that built the nest is hatched therein. And I actually wasn't super familiar with that statement. And so I looked it up online and it's a poem from the late 1500s by Robert Southwell. He was an English poet and, um, and so he um, had written this lovely poem that is called The Nativity of Christ. And, um, and I'll post down below the, the full poem. So if you want to read it, it's, it's old English. So just keep that in mind. It's a, it's a little bit challenging to read, but you can, you can understand it. Um, but what I love about this idea is the bird that built the nest is hatched therein. And so let's talk about this for a moment. So the bird that built the nest. And so we think about Jesus <clears throat> and how he helped create the world, right? And so he helped create the world, and then later he was hatched therein, meaning he was born therein. He came to earth, right? And so um, so when I think about this, I think about, okay, well, how do we apply this to our lives? And how do we apply this thought of absorbing and accepting what Christ has done for us? And, you know, here we are celebrating Christmas and we've bought presents and we put our Christmas trees up and we do all these fun things for Christmas to celebrate that. But then also, what do we do? How do we continue to foster this? How do we continue to grow this idea that the bird that built the nest is hatched therein and that we are here part of the earth? How do we actually enjoy this amazing nest that that God has created for us, right? And so it's this really beautiful kind of amazing opportunity to stop and think and say, okay, what, what do I do with that? And so if we think about the main areas that we're doing work, <clears throat> excuse me, in our life and how we're showing up, right? So we have the work that we do at, in whatever our business or our job is, um, what we do within our church congregations and in our homes. And, um, and those are three really big and important aspects for us working Christian moms. And I think that there's a reality that here we are on this earth at this time, what are we going to do with the talents that God has given us and that now we're here, right? So we didn't come to the earth in the 1500s when Robert Southwell wrote this poem, but we're here now. So what are we going to do to enjoy and to participate and be a part of this world in some really big categories of our life, of our work, our church, and in our homes. And so I invite you to think about what is that gift that you would like to give to Christ that would be a beautiful Christmas gift. Um, but at the same time, how do you show up and to show your Christianity, right? Like to, and from your heart and that love of Christ that you have, how do you use that? How do you show that at work, right? How do you show that in your church congregation and how do you show it in your home? And so think about that and think about, okay, well, what is, what is that gift that I really, really want to give to him? Because I'm here in this nest, right? So we kind of think of ourselves in this big, this big bird's nest. <laughs> and so, and also, for example, you might think about, okay, well, as a Christian at work, what I want to do is I want to be forgiving because Christians are forgiving, right? And so how can I be forgiving to people that I work with? Okay, well, what does that look like? And so maybe if somebody wronged you at work, maybe somebody doesn't do their work right, instead of freaking out and gossiping and talking about them behind their back, instead stop and say, what would Jesus have me do around this situation? 
and then and then go okay we would have me go and prayerfully think about it ponder on the best way I can deal with this person and then go have a conversation with them a one-to-one -one conversation a heartful conversation and Jesus was an amazing person that way right he would always go and he would deal with people one-to-one -one. I love that he had many situations where it was one-to-many but some of his most beautiful work was one-to-one -one. so that's how you can walk in his footsteps is stop and say okay this person wronged me but how can I make it better right and so go and have that one-to-one -one. And then um, and we can take that same example and put it in our church congregations. And maybe somebody offends you at church. Maybe somebody says something that's rude or obnoxious or, you know, whatever. Same thing. Think, okay, how can I be forgiving to that, to that one person and stop and, and be prayerful about it? And then say, okay, well, if Jesus was here, he would go and talk to that person, right, one-on-one, -on -one, right? He wouldn't address them in a large group. He would go and work with them one-on-one -on -one and talk to them and share with them your thoughts and get that stuff off your chest. Um, or if you're not able to talk to that person, is there something that you can do to allow for that forgiveness? Maybe you write a letter that you maybe never actually mail to them and you burn it after you write it, right? So there's a number of different things that you can do um, to deal with forgiveness and then in your home. Um, and so I just the other day, I totally lost it on my four-year-old. I felt so horrible, but she just was not listening and I was, I was tired and overwhelmed with some stuff and I totally yelled at her. And then I just was like, oh my gosh, I am the adult here. What am I doing? I'm not being very Christian. So I went and I apologized to her and I just held her close and, and just looked her in the eyes and just loved on her and told her, I'm so sorry that I yelled at you. And the sweetest little thing she said back to me, and I'm sorry, mommy, I didn't listen to you. I didn't tell her that's what she needed to say. She just knew she was in tune enough to know that she... Um, that she needed to listen to me as well. And so it made our relationship a little bit, a little bit better, a little bit more sensitive and, and connected. And so I'm sharing these examples with you because I'm taking one aspect of Christianity, which is forgiveness. And I'm showing you how you can apply it in work, in your church congregation, and in your home. And so think about that for yourself too. Like what's the one thing that you can do, one, one piece of Christianity that you can give a little bit more and contribute to this beautiful nest that Christ has helped to build for us and that he came here. He condescended to come and be born and to be here and was on the earth for 33 years and made a difference in our lives and, and brought to us so much amazingness, right? So many things that he did for us. And so what can we do as a gift back to him? So I invite you to think about that now that we're done with the Christmas crazy busy and think about what's your gift that you're going to give to Christ. All right, my friends, if this was supportive and helpful for you, please make sure you click subscribe and share this message with another, another working Christian mom in your life who might be able to benefit from this. And let's make a difference for each other. And remember always, my friends, that God has a message for you. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.